Are you struggling to make sense of A2P, 10 DLC, and wondering how to keep your SMS marketing compliant and hassle-free using Go High Level? In today's video, I'm breaking down exactly what A2P, 10 DLC is, why it's critical for your business, and how you can seamlessly set it up within your Go High Level account without losing your mind or wasting time. Stick around because I'm also sharing quick hacks, common pitfalls to avoid, and how to make sure that your messages always land in your customers' inboxes. Let's get started. A2P, Application to Person, 10 DLC, 10 digit long code, is a regulatory standard enacted by US carriers and the US government to prevent spam SMS messages. This is required for businesses to register their text messaging campaigns to enhance deliverability and compliance. There are four choices within high level to do this. There's low volume mixed use. This is recommended and ideal for 90% of the businesses using high level. It's affordable up to about 6,000 segments per day. After that, we have standard campaigns. This is for your larger scale businesses, higher volume, but also higher fees. After that, we have toll free numbers, which are just like registering a local number, but there's really lower deliverability and it now requires extra registration. After that, we have third-party integrations. This is very complex. I would stick to native Go High Level's lead connector for reliability. The third parties are often used for people who are outside the United States or have a very certain use case. We need to create a funnel for this A2P registration. In the description of this video, I provide for you a link to a snapshot with this already built out, ready for you to use. I wanna make it as convenient for you as possible. There is a good chance that you have one of my other snapshots. If you have one of those snapshots, it's already included in there for you. Go into the A2P compliance funnel, and we have four pages here. The first one is the coming soon page. You'll click on edit to edit this page. I've already included a form that is built out and ready to use. This form has two check marks in it. You need to have both of these in order to make this work correctly. This is pulling in the correct information already into the funnel. It has our name of the business. I'm just using A2P compliance snapshot because that's what I have in the business settings. And it has it right here also. But then it has two other links, the terms of service and the privacy policy. We need to work on those pages immediately. So I'll click on this drop down here and I'll go to privacy policy. In privacy policy, I have provided you with a chat GPT prompt that you can use in order to create your privacy policy. Now, I just want to state it for the record, I am not a lawyer, but this one has worked really well for me for all the other privacy policies that I've created in order to get approved for A2P. So I copy this prompt, and I open up ChatGPT. In ChatGPT, I paste the prompt, I scroll up and I put in the name of the site. And then I put in the domain. After that, I put in the description of the website's purpose. And finally, I list the type of data that I will collect, such as emails, IP addresses, or cookies. In this case, I'll be doing emails and mobile phone numbers. Now I have written some very specific prompts in here to make sure that it is correct for A2P. And all I need to do now is hit this button and it'll be created. After it's been created, I scroll all the way down to the bottom and I hit the copy icon. I then go back to my funnel and you'll paste your information right in here. Now, I like to left justify it. I want to make sure that everything is spaced correctly. So I'll pretty this up and make it look correct. I'll put in the correct email, the correct phone number, and make sure it is a really good privacy policy. After that, I'll save it and move on to my terms and conditions by clicking the drop down over here and choosing terms and conditions. All right, I'll do the same thing again. I'll copy the big prompt. I'll go into chat GPT. I'll start a new one. I'll paste the prompt and I'll fill out the information correctly. And then I'll click this arrow right here. After it's done creating it, I'll copy it, go back to my funnel, and paste it in. Now, again, I'm gonna need to format it correctly. And also, oftentimes, ChatGPT will add extra stuff to the bottom or extra stuff to the top. You'll wanna make sure that you clean that out. You'll put in your correct email address, your correct phone number, and your correct information. I'm doing this fast for the video, but you wanna make sure that you take your time with this and do it right. 
I'll left justify it because I think it looks prettier, <laughs> and then I'll hit save and finally publish. Now I'm assuming you've already added your domain to your high level account. I've included a link inside the description for how to install a domain if you don't know how to do that already. After we've done all that, we need to make sure that we copy three distinct links that we're gonna need for later. So the first one is this link. You wanna make sure that you have this because you'll be using that in the registration a little later on. So copy and paste that away to make sure that you have it for later. Next, you'll wanna go to the privacy policy. You'll copy this and again, store it for later. And then terms and conditions and store it for later. Now, you'll go into settings, and again, this only works if you have my snapshot. You'll scroll down and go to custom values. In the snapshot are three values that you need to fill out. The first one is your phone number. You'll be getting the phone number a little bit later on when you start registering. Make sure that you put that here when you're ready. The next one is the link to the privacy policy. Click on these three dots, edit custom value, paste in the policy and click update. We've built this out in such a way that anywhere that we have this code with the privacy policy link, it's going to automatically link up. So just make sure that you put your URL right over there. You'll do the same thing for the terms and condition. Click on the three dots, click edit custom value, paste in the link and click update. Next, we need to go into automations. From the left hand side, we'll hit the go back button We'll go to automation and we already have a best practices folder ready to use. You open up the folder and you need to make sure that you turn all these on to publish and you'll click on the first one. You want to go over to internal notifications and make sure that you choose yourself to get that internal notification and then click publish and save to make this work. And you'll want to do that with every single one of these. Just make sure that they're all published to make the system work correctly. All right, you're ready to get started doing your A2P registration. The first step of the process is to complete your business profile settings. You're going to want to upload your business logo. Put in the correct address. Now, what I've done here is I've put in a fictional company. The fictional company's name is Drop Support. We're just using this for the example. This business doesn't actually exist. But you need to put in your real business information. You put in the legal business name, your correct email address, your phone number, of course your address information, and what business niche you're in. After you do that, you're going to scroll down here and you're going to choose your business type. We have five different choices here. Make sure you use the one that's corresponding with the way you set up your business. Everything from cooperative, corporation, LLC or sole proprietorship, nonprofit corporation or partnership. After you've done that, you wanna put in your industry, your business registration ID type, and your business registration number. Now, if this is a sole proprietor, there will be different information asked for, but for this, we're just gonna pretend like we're putting in an EIN number because 90% of the time, that's the way it's gonna work. So you'll choose the business type, you'll put in the industry, I'm gonna use education in this case, you choose your type, EIN, and after that, you'll put your business registration number right here. And then you wanna put your business region of operations, in this case, the United States and click update information. Make sure this information is correct before you move on to anything else in your A2P registration. After you've set your business profile settings, on the left-hand side, you're gonna scroll down about halfway through and click on phone numbers. You'll register your first phone number. You'll click on add number, you'll add phone number, and you'll wanna search for an appropriate phone number for wherever you are. Generally, what I do is I click on filter, from match to, I choose first part of number and I put in my area code. After I do that, I click apply and choose one of the area codes. You'll be charged a monthly price for that phone number. Once you've found a phone number that you like, click on it, scroll down and click proceed to buy. And you'll have purchased your phone number. Then you'll receive a dialog box that says that you need to register for A2P. You're gonna wanna jot down this phone number, the number that you'll be using, cause you're gonna use that later. Click on it, copy it, and paste it somewhere so it's easy for you to get access to. 
After you've done that, click on register for A2P. You'll be moved over to the Trust Center link right over here. Scroll down and click on start registering now. And you'll need to start filling out this information. If you're in the US or Canada, you'll choose yes and then hit continue. You'll then add your business details. Now, this should already be in there if you filled it out correctly in your business profile. Again, since this is a dummy one, I don't have that in here right now, so I'll choose my business type here, and I'll choose EIN. I'll put in my registration number. I'll choose my industry. I'll put in the email if I need to put it there, and then I'll put in my website URL. You wanna make sure that whatever you are registering under, whatever the use is of this account, that you want the domain in case they go there to be the same industry. You'll put in that URL right here. Since this is the first time I'll be using this domain, I just put it right in there. And then I choose the region that I'm in and I click the blue continue button. You'll check to make sure that you have the address correct and then you'll hit continue. Then you wanna put in your contact information. Make sure you have the correct authorized representatives information in here and then hit the blue continue button. Next, you'll choose low volume standard, the recommended brand type, and then choose I acknowledge brand and campaign registration one time is $23.95. Now, this is an average number. This may not be exact, but generally that's what's gonna cost to register A2P. If you fail for any reason, you'll get charged this again and again until you get it right. So make sure you go through this tutorial in the right way and make sure you have the information right so you don't have to pay it every single time that you make a mistake. After you do that, hit the blue continue button. Next, you'll need to put in your campaign details. Very conveniently, High Level has already given us examples that are just perfect. So click on see example and choose one of these that are appropriate. I personally like to use the top one. I copy it and I paste it. Now, this is super important. Don't just leave it. You need to make sure that you put the company's information in here. So you'll type in the company's information and make sure that you change the name where appropriate. Don't just leave it. I've seen many people do that and it doesn't work well and they have to pay $23.95 again. Scroll down and go to the next example. You'll choose the drop down. I generally go with the first one. I copy it and I paste it. Now, remember I told you before to make sure that you jotted down that phone number. You're gonna wanna put that phone number here. Don't use the one that's in there as an example. You wanna make sure that you put the phone number in there. I've grabbed the phone number and I'm pasting it right in. Now I'll do the example again on this one. For this one, I use the second sample and I paste it right there. Make sure that you have the correct name in here. Don't use a false name. I'll type in my name and then my business's name. After that, I'll make sure that I check the appropriate boxes down here. This message will include embed link. This message will include phone numbers. And if I need them, if it's an age-gated content or is about direct lending or loan arrangements, since I don't need those, all I'm gonna do now is click continue. Now you need to add the user consent. You go back up to see example, you'll copy this information and you'll paste it right here. Now for the user consent, we wanna make sure that we use the link that we saved earlier right over here. You do not wanna have the one that's here right now. You wanna put in the right information. So I'll put in the address that I copied and then I'll put in the phone number that I saved earlier. And finally, I'll do the last opt-in message. I'll click see example. I'll copy it, I'll paste it, and make sure again that I have the right company name in here. And when I've completed all that and made sure it is exactly correct, then I will hit submit. You wanna make sure that you have put in all the right information, actual information that exists. Do not speed through this, because you don't wanna have to spend about $24 every time that you make a mistake. So do it the right way the first time, and then click submit. Remember earlier that we needed a custom value for the phone number? We will copy this phone number, go to custom values again, click the three dots and edit the custom value and paste it right there and click update. 
And that's what it takes to do your A2P registration. It generally takes between 48 and 72 hours to get it all done. Just keep checking on it to make sure that it's complete. If you like this video and you like what we're doing here, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.